Welcome to the Professional Installer's Guide to Installing SunTouch Underfloor. SunTouch Underfloor is used to retrofit homes for electric heating. It is intended for installation under a wood subfloor between joists in residential and light commercial installations. Here's what a typical installation looks like. Underfloor is stapled to the sides of the floor joists two inches below the subfloor. An air gap is left between the mat and the wooden subfloor. Fiberglass insulation is installed below the mat. Underfloor is best suited for stone, tile, or laminate coverings. Before getting started, pay attention to these cautions. Don't cut or modify the mat in any way. Don't remove the foil radiator or modify it. Don't repair the mat. Instead, call for instructions. Don't install one mat on top of another or overlap the mat onto itself. This causes dangerous overheating. Don't leave the mat rolled up or bunched up in the joist bay. Don't run mats across joists. Don't forget to install the sensor. Don't allow objects to come into contact with the foil radiator of the mat. The first step of your project is determining how much underfloor you'll need. Inspect each joist bay and measure the length of open areas where mat will be installed. Select the appropriately sized mats from the manual. Underfloor mats are sized to fit between joists of common dimensions. SunTouch underfloor comes in 120 volts. Use the 240 volt version for larger projects of over 190 square feet. When considering how to arrange your underfloor mats, keep in mind where you can place a steel junction box to which you can route the power leads. Locate your control box on an interior wall 60 inches above the floor. Keep in mind that you'll have to run Romex to or from the junction box below. The control electrical box may be a single gang plastic deep box, but electrical code requirements may require a larger size. You'll also need a floor sensing control like this SunStat programmable model with a seven day schedule to maintain the temperature that's right for you. First, use a quality digital multimeter to check the performance of the mats and sensor wire. Make sure the resistance between the black and white wires matches the resistance on the label. There should be no resistance between the black and green and white and green wires. Write down your readings in your manual's resistance log after each test. Each control includes a floor sensor, which is typically installed before the mats. The manual describes three methods for installing the sensor we'll be demonstrating method one. Drill a one inch hole at an angle into the subfloor directly above where the mat will be installed. Insert the sensor and seal it with adhesive. Before installing the mat, inspect all joists for nails, screws, or other sharp objects. First, measure between the floor joists where the mat will be installed. Then, measure the width of the mat. The difference between these measurements determines how much mesh is available for stapling to the sides of the joists. If the mat begins near a rim joist, measure six inches out. Measure two inches below the subfloor and mark the joists on both sides of the joist cavity. Hold the mat up along one joist and staple the first two feet of the mesh along the two inch mark. At the other end of the mat, hang the mesh on a nail two inches below the subfloor. This will make it easier to install the rest of the mat. Continue stapling the mat mesh every four to six inches along the two inch mark. Raise the mat to the other joist and staple along the two inch mark. Using the same techniques, staple up the other mats. Note the gap left on both sides of the obstruction. Once all the mats are installed, perform another resistance check of your white and black wires with your ohm meter. Connect the power leads in parallel with the Romex cable. 
all the green wires join together with the bare ground wire. All the white wires from the mats join together with the white load wire. All the black wires from the mats join together with the black load wire. This section covers the installation of the Sunstat Programmable Model 50670 for 120 volt wiring. Each control should include a floor sensor with a 15 foot long wire, two screws for mounting in the electrical box, five wire nuts for wiring connections, a small screwdriver, and the instruction sheet which you must read before beginning work. Make certain the power from your electrical source is turned off and that you've read the installation manual and instructions with each control before you begin work. Don't connect more than 15 amps to this control for both 120 and 240 volt underfloor mats. At your control location, you should have the Romex cable from your electrical supply known as the line. This is the Romex cable from the junction box below the floor known as the load. Remove the thermostat front module from the power module by opening the door and loosening the screw. Pull outward near the bottom on the front module and lift it off. Connect the two wires marked line one and line two to the power supply wires using the wire nuts provided. Check the wires to make sure they're secure and then overwrap the wire nuts with electrical tape. Connect the two wires marked load one and load two to the Romex wires coming from the underfloor system and secure them in the same way. Connect the house ground wire to the Romex ground wire from your floor warming system. Insert the ends of the floor sensor wire into the sensor terminals one and two and tighten the screws. The wires can go into either terminal. Before continuing, make sure your power supply voltage matches the voltage rating of your floor warming system. Mount the thermostat. Carefully fold and press the wires back into the electrical box. Don't use the thermostat to push them in because the connections might loosen. Secure the thermostat power module into the box with the mounting screws provided. Carefully snap the front module onto the power module. Tighten the screw. Switch on the power at the main circuit panel. After installing the controller, briefly energize the system to test the components. During this test, make sure heating shows on the display. Without insulation, the mat will not heat the floor. The mat, however, should begin to warm within one to two minutes. If you don't feel any heat, turn off the system and try to find where the wire might be damaged. Call toll-free at 866-558-3369 for instructions. Take pictures before installing insulation. Install R13 to R19 insulation below the mat. Secure it in place with rods, staples, or other methods. Refer to the manual for more details on how to install the insulation. Now, here are some basic programming features for your control. Quick setup. Your thermostat should be turned off and the display will show off along with the time and day. Slide the on-off switch to the upper position, turning the thermostat on. The display will show the time and day, temperatures, and other information. To turn the thermostat off any time, slide the on-off switch to the lower position. No heating will occur, and all your programming is retained. Press the Options button and hold for one second. An F and 12H will show on the display, indicating Fahrenheit temperature scale and a 12-hour clock. Press the down or up button to toggle to Celsius and a 24-hour clock if needed. Press the hold return button to return to the normal operating mode. Press the day time button and hold for one second. The hour should be blinking. Press the down or up button to adjust the hour. Press the day time button briefly. The minutes should be blinking. Press the down or up button to adjust the minutes. 
Press the day time button briefly. The day should be blinking. Press the down or up button to adjust the day. Press the hold return button or wait 15 seconds and the thermostat will return to the normal operating mode, saving your settings. This thermostat comes with a convenient warming schedule to get you started. During weekdays, your floor warms to 82 degrees between 6 and 8 a.m. It gets warm again between 5 and 10 p.m. Between these warming periods, the floor temperature drops back to 75 degrees. Saturdays and Sundays are similar, but your warm periods are slightly longer. Temporarily override the temperature set point. You can let the thermostat operate in its normal schedule program or override it in one of the following ways. When heat is called for, heating will show on the display and full power is supplied to the floor warming system. If you want to temporarily override the temperature set point, press the down or up arrow button and hold for one second. The set point will blink and you can select the temperature you want. Press the hold return button briefly and the thermostat will return to the normal operating mode with your new adjustment. To cancel the temporary override and return to the normal schedule temperature, press the hold return button briefly. Hold a selected temperature. You can hold the current set point temperature indefinitely, especially useful when you're on vacation. Press the hold return button and hold for one second. Hold will show on the display and the set point temperature will be maintained until you cancel this hold. To cancel this hold, press the hold return button and hold for one second. Hold will disappear from the display. Setback. You can use the setback button to override the current set point temperature. This is especially useful if you have an alternate temperature you repeatedly select when you're away. Press the setback button briefly. The setback will show on the display and its temperature. This set point will hold until the next scheduled program time. To hold this setback temperature indefinitely, press the hold return button and hold for one second. To cancel this hold, press the hold return button again and hold for one second. To cancel this setback temperature and return to the normal scheduled temperature, press the setback button briefly. For more programming options, please consult your SunTouch manual. Remember, this video is not a substitute for the underfloor installation manual, which has additional details and troubleshooting guides to help you do the job right the first time. We wish you a successful installation, and don't hesitate to call if you have any questions.